A computer program is a list of instructions that we write in a programming language that the computer can understand. In episode 4, I said that this sentence is useful, but not entirely true, and it's about this part, a programming language that a computer can understand. Even though programming code may be understandable to us, to a computer it is just a series of instructions that must be processed in a specific way, the computer doesn't understand our source code. Although we use various programming languages such as C-sharp, Swift, Ruby, Python or Java, but the central unit or processor in any computer, laptop, phone, server, game console, it is a piece of hardware that deals with running our program and does not understand our source code. The only thing it understands is the so-called machine code or machine language that presents itself this way. These are basic commands, like adding one number to another, but now presented in a form that the computer can understand. If you look at it, you probably feel scared, and that's okay, it's a natural reaction, it looks like gibberish. It's intended for machines, not humans, and you don't need to be able to read it. The vast majority of professional programmers never ever deal with machine code. Of course, it is possible to write programs in machine code, but this is a specialized skill that certain positions require. However, this is not a common programming skill. Writing machine code is an extremely time-consuming, long, error-prone, tedious process. Moreover, the machine code can vary depending on the chip version and hardware, which further complicates the process. The whole point of having programming languages is precisely that we don't have to write machine code. When we write source code in a programming language, it must be converted into machine code that the processor can understand before the program can run. There are two main ways to convert source code to machine code, we can either compile or interpret the source code. The difference between compilation and interpretation is not what happens, but when the conversion to machine code occurs. Here's what I mean. Imagine I wrote a simple program. So I wrote the source code on my computer and I want you to run my new program on your computer. I wrote the source code, but your computer needs the machine code. Option number one is compilation. A compiler is a tool that parses my source code file, statement by statement, and transforms it into machine code. The result of this process is a new file containing machine code, something that your processor can understand and run directly. We call this an executable file. After compilation, I give you this finished file, which you simply run to run my program. As a result of the compilation process, you do not have access to my source code, it remains on my computer, without the possibility of viewing it, you do not even know in which programming language it was written. Option number two is to use an interpreter. In this approach I give you a copy of my source code instead of compiling it. Your computer must translate this code into machine code, and to do this it uses an interpreter. However, the important thing is that you do not need to install translation software specifically. Often, interpreters are already included in web browsers or operating systems and are used automatically. An example would be a JavaScript interpreter built into a web browser. Therefore, if you just got JavaScript code from me, you can run it because your browser knows how to interpret it. With an interpreter, there is an important difference, the conversion of code to machine code does not occur in advance. This process occurs only when the program is launched on your computer. During this time, the interpreter analyzes subsequent instructions in the source code, transforming them into machine code and immediately running it, without saving it as a separate file. Of course, both methods have their advantages and disadvantages. Compiled languages often allow you to create faster programs because the conversion takes place earlier. However, their disadvantage is that the machine code is platform dependent. For example, if you compile a program to run on a PC, it won't run on a Mac and vice versa. Some programming languages support compilation of multiple versions of a program for different operating systems. With interpreted languages these days, they're often cross-platform because as long as the person you're sending the source code to has the interpreter, you don't care what operating system they're using. However, interpreted programs may run slower because a conversion must occur in addition to running the program. Moreover, with interpreted languages, you also have to make the source code available to anyone who wants to run your program, and this can be both a benefit and a risk. 
there is also a third option, which is a compromise between compilation and interpretation. Modern programming languages often offer the ability to partially compile code into an intermediate form, known as bytecode or intermediate language. In this way, most of the compilation process can be completed in advance, with the final step, called just-in-time compilation, taking place on the end-user's computer, which transforms the intermediate code into platform-specific machine code. Understanding these different options is important, but it is not something that should be considered a major point of concern or immediate decision. Most programming languages can be easily classified as compiled, interpreted, or mixed, depending on their nature. There are, of course, borderline cases and exceptions to the rule. In the case of compiled languages such as C, C++, Swift, simple compilation is usually used. In contrast, languages such as JavaScript, Python, and PHP typically operate in interpretation mode. The most famous languages that take an indirect or hybrid approach are Java and c -sharp. The decision to choose a programming language does not depend only on the compilation model. We often make the decision based on other factors, such as the target platform, the type of application being developed, or other design requirements, 